Good afternoon. My name is Nicole, and I will be your conference operator today. At this time, I would like to welcome everyone to How to Apply for an Innovation Fund. All lines have been placed on mute to prevent any background noise. After the speaker's remarks, there will be a question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question during this time, simply press star, then the number one on your telephone keypad. If you would like to withdraw your question, please press the pound key. Thank you. Dr. Susan Hasmiller, Senior Advisory for Nursing at the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone, and sorry for the uh, delay. We were going to be delayed by five minutes. Wanted to make sure everyone got on, but we had some technical difficulties. So I welcome you to this uh, webinar, and thanks, thanks for you taking the time to join us today, uh, a webinar that features a new and exciting funding opportunity. Uh, the Future of Nursing Campaign for Action will provide funds to select action coalitions that demonstrate an ongoing or new project addressing nursing's role in building a culture of health and health equity. More information is included in the RFP, which is available on our website at uh, campaignforaction.org. We'd like to let everyone know this webinar is being recorded and will be available on the campaign's website. Please be advised that any questions will be answered during the Q&A period of the presentation. And we're excited to provide each action coalition with another funding opportunity. Uh, the campaign for action continues to have an enormous amount of success, and it's because of all of your work and the work that partners uh, have accomplished. Major credit to all action coalitions for their work on the IOM recommendations. Because of your tireless efforts and success, we can now focus in on nursing's role in building a culture of health and health equity. We already know that many of your organizations have been very innovative over the past eight years, and we want to promote continued innovation in your work. We know that prior to the campaign, some of you have worked on scope of practice, diversity, appointing nurses as leaders, increasing the numbers of highly educated nurses and improving data collection. But because of the campaign, uh, many of you took on leadership roles at scope of practice or diversifying the nursing workforce or positioning nurses to build a culture of health. Honestly, you know, you're just all so amazing and we want to help you to continue to be successful. With this modest fund and its associated technical assistance, we will help you continue to push innovative, um, uh, the innovative envelope, so to speak. We want you to really to continue to achieve the first campaign imperative of moving beyond nursing. I know you've heard that a lot. Uh, we want you to engage with community-based organizations that are new to you and who would help you position nurses as leaders in building a culture of health achieving health equity, increasing consumer access to care, um, et cetera. There's some background as to why this fund and why now, and we want to keep the uh, momentum going. I'm going to get the next slide here. Okay. Uh, our goal for this uh, two-year competitive funding opportunity is to spur the creation of strategies that you and others can replicate. These strategies would help sustain action coalition work while highlighting the importance of collaboration with diverse stakeholders. We want you to engage more non-nursing, community-based nursing champions. For example, we've mentioned from time to time that it's important to work with either large or, or local-based hospitals to help them achieve their goals with the community benefits. If you haven't reached out to these hospitals and health systems, now we want you to motivate you to do so. Of course, you would want to make sure that their goals align with your goals of positioning nurses as leaders in building a culture of health and promoting health equity. Uh, awards are up to $25,000, and we want you to use these funds over a two-year period. I do want to point out that many of you have successfully continued to obtain funding from former RWJF SIP funds and or from the Innovations Fund. Therefore, as you know, we are requiring you this time as well to obtain a one-to-one -one match. 
However, once you've obtained this funding, you can continue to seek matching funds from future prospective funders. Next slide. The Innovations Fund. Um, so I want to run down a little bit. Maybe I won't read all of these necessarily, but um, these are the recipients from the last Innovations Funds from, from the Action Coalition. You can see them on your screen, and I thought I would just read maybe a couple of these. Uh, let me start with Colorado. So the Colorado Action Coalition's project seeks to advance nursing leadership by supporting the expansion of a nurse-led healthcare model to federally qualified health centers in the state. Nurse leaders interested in implementing this RN-based model will be offered a two-day workshop and team-based coaching. The project is called Nurses Leading the Transformation of the Practice Environment. So let me give you an example from Massachusetts, what they did for their innovation, or what they are doing for their innovations fund. Uh, the Massachusetts Action Coalition's project called Promoting Health Literacy to Influence Health and Wellness of Students in the Community aims to develop a health literacy initiative for students in select communities. The initiative will encourage nurses to become leaders and participants in existing school wellness committees. Participating nurses will receive population health training and access to resources from partners so that they can be better positioned to shape school policies concerning school nutrition, physical activity, and other student health issues. You know, I'm not remembering who the uh, matching funds uh, organization was for all of them, but I remember certainly this one. Um, in Massachusetts, the funding partner was the National Library of Medicine. So I thought that was really, really interesting. Uh, Michigan, the Michigan Action Coalition is creating a network platform called Nurses Connect that features social networking, professional networking, and part online classroom. Um, the, the, plat uh, the aim is to increase professional development opportunities and strengthen connection among nurses to increase job satisfaction, improve retention, and promote lifelong learning. Uh, the platform will include leadership development, mentoring, um, and especially an overview and connection with uh, culture of health. Uh, let me see if there's uh... So here's one. I'll read Nebraska, and maybe that will be... Uh, the last one. Uh, the Nebraska Action Coalition will involve nurses on an interprofessional committee whose purpose is to increase access to care by promoting the involvement of community health workers on interdisciplinary teams. The Nebraska Action Coalition will also participate in events that promote the importance of nurses leading in their communities to build a culture of health. Such activity includes hosting regional conferences, using the RWJF Culture of Health Framework and other tools to assist communities in creating their community health improvement plans. The information gathered will contribute to the development of a national uh, community health improvement plan model for other communities to use as they create their own plans. So that gives you, um, an idea of uh, some of the projects that were um, put forward last time and, and they were successful. So why don't we go to the next slide. And, and you can see that there's a link that will, uh, on, the, on the previous slide, you can see there's a link that you can go to to, uh, to read more about those states and what they're doing for their innovation grants. So thanks, so let me go to the next slide. So, uh, so let's review the eligibility uh, criteria. To be eligible for the fund, each action coalition must have the following. You need to have matching funds up to $25,000. Uh, I started with number five, but that's okay. You need to have matching funds up to $25,000 to advance and enhance the work of addressing nursing's role in building a culture of health and health equity. Matching funds can be in hand or demonstrated through a letter from a prospective funder that will confirm their commitment to funding to you for this project. Matching funds must come from sources other than RWJF. 
Action coalitions must, must match the Innovation Fund Award dollar for dollar. In kind support, we love in kind support. We encourage that always, uh, is always encouraged, but does not count as the cash match. If there are circumstances that necessitate the matching funds do not align with the project timeline, then you can explain that in the application. The matching funds may come from any source, and we mean any source at all. The more matching funds an action coalition can have, uh, the better. The organization that accepts the fund on behalf of the action coalition must be a public entity such as a public university or a college or a non-for-profit tax-exempt 501c3 organization. We want your proposed project to show that it could be replicated. I'm going through, you know, all of the criteria here, so I'm talking about number three now, right, replicability. We want your proposed project to show that it could be replicated by you or other action coalitions. We want you to increase your multi-sector partnerships, and we want this effort to demonstrate that you can sustain your work to continue addressing nursing's role in building a culture of health and health equity. In addition, consistent with RWJF values, this program embraces diversity and inclusion. Uh, let me see, we're on number seven, right? Diversity, <coughs> excuse me, diversity and inclusion across multiple dimensions such as race, ethnicity, gender, age, and disadvantaged socioeconomic status. We strongly encourage applications that will help us expand the perspectives and experiences we bring to our work. Finally, if you receive the Innovations Fund previously, this is the good news, okay? So you saw the others that I talked about. Uh, so if you receive the Innovations Fund previously, you are eligible to uh, apply for this fund again. So you can either expand on your first project or it can be something different. You can make that determination as an action coalition. Okay, next slide. So the action frame, this action framework that you see here, you're all used to seeing this, can help all of you get started. Um, and the biggest thing I can tell you or, or anybody that ever applies for anything that has to do with Robert Wood Johnson, just feed back the words that you see on our website or you see in this framework. Feed it back. That's, that way we understand that you have seen this, you know it, and that we're all in alignment. So RWJ developed this framework with the help of RAND Corporation. We want to catalyze a national movement Support and improve health, well-being, and equity. The framework is meant to broaden the discussion of what influences health and chart progress. The action framework addresses the interdependence of social, economic, physical, and environmental factors. Uh, it is intended to generate unprecedented collaboration and chart our nation's progress toward building a culture of health. We want to improve health, well-being, and equity for all. And, um, you know, really look over this. I know that many of you have, but if you, if you really look at that and, and, and really look at um, how we're measuring culture of health as well, this is not just about the community. You know, it's, it's about uh, the insides of the health systems as well, whether it's uh, community benefits programs or, um, you know, working inside that framework. Uh, consumer engagement is, is part of this as well. So really, really take a look at it. Honestly, uh, the sky's the limit with this. Uh, hardly anything is disqualified, uh, but using the language and, and really aligning with this framework is, is quite important. When we make health a shared value, foster cross-sector collaboration, create healthier, more equitable communities, and strengthen integration of health services and systems. That's what I guess I was talking about last week. It's just about the health systems as well. We are more likely to see improved health, well-being, and equity. Next slide. RWGF is working to build a culture of health where everyone has the opportunity to live a healthier life. But far too many of us, the prospects for good health are limited by where we live. 
how much money we make or discrimination we face because of who we are. Health equity means we all have the basics to be as healthy and well as possible. And as we like to say, it's giving everyone a fair and equitable chance of a healthy life, a healthy and well life. The Robert Rich Johnson, next slide, the Robert Rich Johnson Culture of Health Framework emphasizes the importance of cross-sector collaboration and building effective relationships. So working together with outside community partners will strengthen sustainability efforts while leading to greater impact. So you should really use this opportunity to work with uh, diverse partners with similar goals, such as local health departments, schools. I'd love, well, I'm getting into it now, but I'd love to see somebody do something with school system. Schools, transportation, organizations, business for, uh, businesses for workplace health promotion, and even other healthcare professionals. You can work with other effective coalitions. And there are, uh, there are, the states are reaming with a, with a health and well-being types of coalitions. I think if you go to your, um, you know, your, your state and, and fill in like Mississippi this or Arizona that, healthy coalitions for this, healthy coal, you know, you'll, you'll be able to see what's going on a bit. So look for alternative funding sources through corporate giving, state or federal grants or individuals. Again, um, the sky's the limit with where you get your money. Uh, next slide. So this is technical assistance. We want to help all applicants with the targeted assistance that will help you achieve your goal. As we have underscored, we will provide you with ample assistance regarding your diversity work. We are ready to do the same for those of you who want more assistance on coalition building, on fundraising, and with communities. So um, at the beginning, middle, or at the end of uh, of the time that you are to submit this application, please reach out to us. You know, you might be from a state, let's say, I don't know, Michigan or, or Ohio, and, and you're wondering what else is going on. Sometimes we know other coalitions or other things that are going on um, that you might not, that we can <clears throat> connect you with. Uh, we have consultants who can help you with coalition building and others who can help with fundraising. I do need to point out that the fundraising consultants can help you develop your messaging and to identify who to ask, perhaps, for funding. They are not available, I think this is obvious, they are not available to help you write your grant applications, but they can review them for you. So we're offering a lot of technical assistance here uh, to you, um, and, and please take advantage. Sometimes we find that the people who need and seek the most help in the beginning, and, and we're all over it, and we're helping them, and we know more about what you're doing, it, it's just really to your benefit. Uh, we can provide you with some of the assistance to help you prepare your applications too. And we will continue to help all applicants, and this is really important, I want to say this again, we, wanna, we, we will continue to help all applicants in these areas even once the fund is distributed. We're also happy to provide you with communications advice, and for the fund awardees actually, those who uh, receive the, the money, we will provide a blog template, press releases, as well as a social media kit to announce your award. We also want all of you to use the updated Culture of Health video toolkit that we put out in late 2017. You can use that for your pitches before and after this fund application. And uh, uh, Jen, Wynn, uh, those of you staff who are on the phone, we may want to get this out to folks again in case they can't find it, okay? So again, for any requests for assistance you would like and need, please reach out to Jasmine Cooper at CCNA and she will help coordinate that for you. Okay, we're coming to the end here. How to apply? Uh, so here you go. Uh, proposals should be submitted via email to Innovations Fund at AARP by 10 p.m. Eastern Time on Thursday, February 28th. 
Uh, and remember, you don't have to have matching money in hand, right? That's pretty, that's, that would be a pretty tight timeline. It's a pretty tight timeline anyways. Uh, but you have to have some kind of commitment by February 28th, okay? Please answer the questions in the application document and submit your application as a PDF file. Don't leave things blank. Um, you know, any slight little glitch that you leave out or you go over, you go under, or you don't answer things uh, as per the directions, it's just going to throw you out. So um, really please pay attention to the directions of the application. All funding decisions will be made by a review team uh, consisting of Campaign for Action leadership staff and consultants. Okay, next slide. Uh, so again, here are my lovely colleagues at the Center of Champion Nursing in America, my little dream team. Again, between now and the due date, please direct your questions to our project manager, Jasmine Cooper. You can see Jasmine right there. We have set up an email account for the Innovations Fund, uh, and we don't have that listed. Maybe it's on the next page, I guess, but it's Innovations Fund at AARP.org. Innovations Fund at, at AARP.org. So you can ask any, you can ask Jasmine anything, anytime. If she doesn't know the answer to something, she will find out uh, the answer and get back to you. We also encourage all applicants to reach out to Win and Jasmine after the funds go out. So, last slide. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'd like to open up the phone lines for any questions. Press star one on your telephone keypad to ask a question or use the chat feature. Um, I'm gonna get that chat feature up for me so I can see your chats there, yep. Um, and use the chat feature to ask a question or uh, to send everyone. So uh, press to everyone to ask that question. So operator, can you open the phone lines and we will see what kind of questions you have. At this time, I would like to remind everyone, in order to ask questions, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. <clears throat> we'll pause for just a moment to compile the Q&A roster. There are no questions at this time. Okay, no questions. I'm going to give a little bit of time. So uh, so this is, this is Winifred. And um, Sue, thank you so much for your presentation. Um, sure. I was taking note on um, Googling the names of um, numerous people who are participating in this call. Many are new to me. Their names are new to me. Um, so they might be participating on behalf of um, Action Coalition leaders that we are more familiar with. Um, but if anyone uh, who's new to the campaign who has a question of any kind regarding the campaign, you could also ask that now. Um, and of course, we're happy to especially connect it to the Innovations Fund. Mm -hmm. You do have one question right. from the line okay. of Kimberly Harper. Your line is open. Okay, we, we certainly know Kim Harper. Hi, guys. Hi, Kim. I have a, hello. Good afternoon. I actually have a whole list of questions. So if Great. I could, I don't know if you want me to do them all or just do one and then give other people chances, what's best for you. But let's oh. start, and then you can tell me if you yeah. want me to keep going yeah. or stop, okay? Yeah, all right. you, you go, Kim, yeah. Yep. They're quick ones. Okay. One, um, is there a reason? I know that the, the – um, Limit is 10 pages, but, but then there are pages, uh, you know, that you can put for attachments. And is there an, a limit to the number of letters of support that should be, uh, could be included with this from organizations, you know, like school corporations and all these groups that we would be working with? Who wouldn't be funders, but would be supporters? Yeah, I don't think there's any limit to letters of support. No. No. No, okay. we, 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 right. love, we love letters of support. Okay, perfect. Then the next one is, does the match have to be for a specific focus of, within the grant, or could it be the overall project of the grant? 
even though the project is much more inclusive than what would this, this fifty thousand dollars will cover? Your twenty five and our twenty five. I think either, right? When uh, it could be something very specific in the uh, in the uh, innovations grant or the general one. I would say either. Wouldn't you say, when? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Great. Can, now, um, can I, the other, <clears throat> this is Jen. I just want to add one yeah. comment on that. It can be general or specific as long as the budget that you submit is clearly delineated on how the funds would be used. <clears throat> now your, your portion of the funds would be used, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. Um, another question is, will the award be split evenly between the two years? So should we expect that we would get 12, you know, 1,500 one year and 12,500 the second year for our budget? No, it all, goes at it, it all goes at it once, right? Okay, Jen? correct. To be, right. So, to yeah. Be it, uh, and okay. may I add on to that answer? Yes, of yeah. course. So, Kim, if you get the $25,000, in the beginning, uh -huh. we would give you yes. the $25,000 up front. If you were to get um, 20000 and you're waiting for another 5000 from another funder, uh, we would give you, we would match, we would give you the 20000 match and give you the 5000 match once you got that, the original. Got it. Okay. Well, we already have the twenty five, so we're good with oh, that. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right, great. Then the other question I have is, is there any issue with any of this money being used um, for personnel or consulting? I, we didn't see that. that that's no. a legitimate project expense. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a legitimate, as long as you can mm -hmm. explain in your proposal and in your budget narrative how that person will be contributing to the project. Got it. Okay, perfect. All right, those are my questions. I thank you, ladies, very much. Those, those were excellent <laughs> questions, and I think you answered, uh, I think you asked questions for other people as well. Hopefully some others will be spurred on. I do have a, uh, a question in the chat room, and it is very particular to an idea, and you are certainly welcome to run your ideas by us. Of course, you know that um, uh, we can tell you if it's a good idea up front, but we can't tell you if you're going to get chosen, of course. So this one says, hi, everyone. I'm the coordinator for distance education and the instructional design at Bon Secours Memorial College of Nursing in Richmond, Virginia. We are interested in doing a pilot program using iPads with our students. We see this as tying to all the principles for a culture of health. You think this is a viable idea to apply for this fund? I mean, I think all of us on the phone could answer that now. It, it seems like a, a very interesting idea. I think as long as it's, um, you know, very tied to, it seems like an education project, uh, as long as it's tied to um, helping students understand that they have a role to play in addressing the social determinants, and this is sort of an in innovative way of getting at that, um, as long as it has to do with Culture of health, health equity, social determinants. Um, yeah, and you've added technology. So, um, will it get funded? I don't know. Is it a viable idea? Absolutely, absolutely, it is. And then um, I ha so I have an an answer and a question or a question. So, mm -hmm. um, Julie, I I would assume that you would be submitting that with the Action Coalition leadership. Mm, or would good, you... good question, yeah. This is for Action Coalition, yeah. Right. So, mm -hmm. Good so question, Wynn. If, I'm not sure I understand. Okay. So, ah. uh, <clears throat> so the Action Coalition, so the Campaign for Action, um, we've been doing work for eight full years and um, and we have uh, we have coalitions in every state and Washington DC nearly every state some are reorganizing themselves and um, Virginia and e so each coalition has leadership um, so if you have if you're 
part of the Action Coalition, you would work with the Action Coalition leadership to apply for this fund. Right. And, um, and if you're not part of an Action Coalition, still go to the Action Coalition and ask them if they would consider submitting this application um, and that you would like to be part of the Action Coalition and especially through this project that you're working on. Right, so, and if you're not sure who your Action Coalition lead is, um, you can contact Jasmine. Yeah, okay, so there you go. Yeah, I'm not sure if you're, yeah. So, you, so this is for Action yeah. Coalitions, win great, great catch. Yeah. This is for Action so, Coalition. Yeah. Yeah. So Julie, um, reach out. Uh, reach out to. Great. You're going to contact Jasmine. Excellent. Okay. Um, Very good. And then uh, Sue, you have a question. Oh wait. Hello. We currently there's an individual question. We currently have a student success center and improving implementation, improving implementing a mentoring program with some funding. Can funding be implied to an already approved grant to supplement and add to improve a mentoring program? So Sue, this is an organization. So Dorothy, uh, this is from a woman named Dorothy Glisson. Dorothy, can you um, uh, say where, you, it sounds like you're at a, a university or a college. Why don't, you, why don't you come online if you can? Can you, can you uh, do start one and, uh, and, and uh, also, I'm glad these are coming up, but some of these are very specific that we'll want to touch base with these people afterwards. But let's, uh, but this is a good question. So there's already, um, there's already a project, right? There's already a project and this, we have to make sure that this is part of your action coalition and you have action coalition leader sort of approval or buy-in. That's really important because we are not going outside of our action coalitions. Right. So, uh, but, if you, but if you have a, a project that's already up and running about mentoring and it's already funded, um, you know, this would have to be really, you'd have to reconfigure and you'd have to, you know, how would you reconfigure this to make this about health equity and, uh, you know, the social determinants? Uh, So, um, so I'm still waiting to hear from uh, Dorothy either in the chat or to call in. But Karen mm -hmm. Mason, who's with the uh, uh, Virginia Action Coalition, um, hi Karen, um, has asked how many Action Coalitions will receive funding. Uh, actually, um, for this year, we did not limit it to a certain amount that would receive funding. Um, last year we said it would be 10 on only nine received, nine received funding. Um, but um, we, we have we, up to 10 in this RFP yeah, as well. Yeah, we, we do but have we up do. to 10, yeah. Oh, so no more 10. than 10. Yeah. All right, thank That's you right. for the correction. Right. When, yeah, so no more than 10, but we're not obligated as, we, as the last time. We will only fund innovation projects that we believe are innovative, right, and are addressing right. The social determinants and, and equity. So we might have six, we may have eight. We hope, because I love to give away money, it's like my favorite thing to do, I want to fund 10. Mm -hmm. And to summarize Sue's response before about um, uh, Dorothy Glisson's, oh, for some reason you cannot hear me, but I wanted to seek funding to support our Student Success Center at Bowie State University. So, so Dorothy, thank you for that question. If you, it sounds like you already have funding for it and you're asking if you could add to that funding. Um, you could uh, definitely make that case. You would need to work with the um, Maryland Action Coalition leadership. Um, remember to do that. Um, so it can't just be for, Okay, good. You 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 got that. Okay, so Dorothy couldn't um, get into the call, but ha is um, contacting us privately, Sue, so I can see. Okay, that. that's fine. Okay, good. Thank you. 
excuse me, Dorothy, the line is open. Oh, great. Hi, Dorothy. Sorry, Go ahead, Dorothy. Dorothy. Okay. All right. Well, um, you so you'll get back with her when. Yeah. Yeah, and and I like how you said it. You would really have to make the case. the The idea is not to tack on this money to a pre existing project necessarily. I mean, we said you could do that, yes, but you'd have to make the case as to how this is particularly uh, specific to this uh, innovation grant. Okay, any other questions? Oh, here, can an action coalition submit more than one proposal? Could one commission coalition receive multiple awards? Um, no, I, I, we didn't discuss that, but um, you, you could submit, you, uh, we didn't talk about this, Jen, and when, uh, right. whether an action coalition could submit more than one, but I don't have a problem with that. I don't either. Me but too. They I could, agree. You agree? Okay, good. So we're making a decision in real time, but you would only get awarded once. Mm -hmm. it, re yes. it reminds me of the uh, a meeting that I was at a couple of weeks ago where they gave away door prizes, and un unbelievably, they kept calling numbers, and my number, I had all these tickets, and my number was called like three times. And I think, I'm thinking, God, I, I can win all of this. No, they only gave me one prize. That's it. <laughs> That's it. That's all I got. And they didn't right. give me a choice. They didn't give me a choice of which gift I wanted. Right. That's it. But, and what we might, you know, depending on, say if um, two or more applications came in from uh, individual action <clears throat> coalitions, what I'm very, um, I'm going to preface this, what I'm, uh, I want to preface this. <clears throat> I'm very encouraged by all of the new names that we see on this, um, <clears throat> on the participant list today. So very <clears throat> encouraged by that. Um, and uh, so if you're not already connected with your Action Coalition, connect with your Action Coalition. Um, uh, be in touch with Jasmine if you've tried to reach out to the Action Coalition and they haven't gotten back to you. And, um, uh, and so with that, if, um, if uh, and I, you know, Sue, Jen, and I will have to talk about this online, uh, offline, but say if two or more applications came in from an individual action coalition and we thought that both were good and that there's a possibility that could, they could be combined somehow, I'll talk with Sue and, Sue and Jen if, there's, if, we, if that would be an option that we would come back to you with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and that, that's up to the Action Coalition to win. They, they right. you know, they're only going to get one $25,000 check. So right. uh, here's the other thing. This is where I thought you were going to talk about when we talked about this uh, with the first innovations fund. Somehow we didn't include it here, but we would be very, very interested in <clears throat> two or more states coming together to do something. I would love to see that two or more states coming together. And, um, you know, we, I think what we did talk about, right, that if I'll just how about Virginia, West Virginia, because they abut one another, right? So we'll just say it that way. Um, they would each get 25, so you could up the amount for a particular mm -hmm. project if two or three states if two states came together, you could get fifty thousand instead of twenty five thousand. I would love to see that. Yeah. We want to be as much creativity as we can uh, you know engender here, uh, whether on our part or your part, just go for it. You know the biggest thing is we want nurses to be involved as leaders, uh, working on these issues. And these are our ways of, um, even with small amounts of money, uh, making this happen and putting, 
your name and your action coalition and the nursing profession in the limelight. This is what we this is what we want to do. So, uh, Sue, we have another question here from Teresa Garrett. What are the limitations on where matching cut funds can come from? Are federal grants allowed? Absolutely. So, really, Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. I mean, uh, I, I read you the one from Massachusetts, right? Massachusetts, the Literacy Project, they got a, a matching grant from the National Library of Medicine. Sue, so to expand on that question, are there limitations from any, even though that's fine, the federal grants, but are there some businesses or sectors that um, RWJ does not allow matching funds from? Any that might have a conflict of business? Well, I mean, legally, we have companies that are no-goes from the foundation's point of view, it would probably be the same from the AERP Foundation. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we, we're not, we're never going to allow anything coming from any kind of gun lobby, right? Mm -hmm. Or, mm -hmm. or um, alcohol, fire, tobacco. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah. Thank you. But, but yeah, thanks, Jen. Mm -hmm. But we, we'd love to see a diversification. Wouldn't it be great to see a diversity with some of these funds? Uh, a business, a bank, bank you know, banks um, in our first, right, in our first SIP grants, um, and I think another project I had, uh, banks have to do mm -hmm. community community involvement efforts. They so, do. and they love nurses. Mm -hmm. They love nurses. Um, banks are a real target. Those of you with hefty savings accounts, checking accounts, just go in with your checkbook and say, look, this is what I'm giving you. What can you give me? Other questions? These are great questions. Your next question. Anything else, Jen, that came up from the last time that uh, maybe needs some clarification? Yeah, um, I, I, think there, I think there's another question in the queue. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, what is it? Let, let me just say this too. I would also be interested, as much as I'd like to see uh, two states come together to do something, I'd love that. I would also um, be very interested. I mean, you'd have to really, really make the case, but someone who received the Innovations Fund the first time to really up the ante. You, something, maybe you worked on something and it worked out well, and now you're going to just replicate it or, you know. Mm -hmm. Really interested in that. Okay, somebody in the queue. Your next question comes from the Alia Sada. Line is open. Hello, this Hello, is Ayla. Go ahead. Oh, hi, Ayla. Hi. Hey, uh, I'm I'm so excited. Uh, our project. I'm excited because we did get the innovation fund the first time, and our project's going great. We do want to extend and expand it. Uh, and also, it will be replicatable for sure. Uh, so what my question is, though, the first fund was for two years. And this one, then, for one of those years, will overlap the first one. So I'm just curious about the expenditure of the funding. Um, is that going to be time limited in the sense that, you know, it's a logistical question, basically, about the funding and spending it. So, Jen, if we, yep. if we were so, to be Ayla, I'm assuming if you were to receive a new, a, a second round, you would still expend the original money you had earmarked for Innovation Fund One within the two year that you were allocated to do that. And this mm -hmm. new funding, there would be an overlap, but it's for new work that would then be associated with the new expense that you would then incur within the two years of the new period. Right. So, so as long as you're spending Innovation Fund 1 money within the Innovation Fund 1 period, this second round would be available to spend on the new proposed work within the Innovation Fund 2 period. 
It's overlapping. You're going to get overlapping uh-huh. spending. I mean, if okay. you were to make the case, if you were to make the case, that is. Yeah. It is overlapping, but it's earmarked for certain aspects of the project. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. <clears throat> okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Glad you're reapplying. Mm-hmm. Your next question comes from the line yeah. of Rachel DeSantis. Do you want to say open? Okay. Hi. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Go ahead, yeah. Rachel. Oh, great. Um, thank you for all the information. I, I am myself uh, new to this, although my organization organization isn't. Um, but I'm calling from Johns Hopkins Home Care Group in Maryland, um, and I was just wondering, um, would you uh, think a viable application for planning purposes would be allowed. Um, I'm just thinking if we had all our partners and we were focused on solving an issue together but didn't necessarily have a full complete idea of the solution and wanted to kind of use this as a planning grant um, to target health health equity, um, would that be for consideration? Um, Not well. So first of all, this is going to be a competitive process, and um, I, I'm not sure. Um, in theory, you can compete and you can put that forward. Um, you might be competing with other uh, action coalitions that are really going to take it further than planning. You understand what I mean? Yep. And then you're going to have a whole review committee saying, should we choose this one or should we choose the ones that are so so of course you can submit that uh, but i don't i don't know how it would fare with with other applications that's what i would say okay. i just don't know that's very helpful mhm there are no further questions at this time Okay, well, you know uh, who to reach out to, um, Jasmine, for general questions. And if you don't get your question answered, um, you can always reach out to Wynn. And um, for logistics, Jen, but start start with Jasmine, right, guys? Yep. Correct. Okay. Okay, we'll make, very good. We'll, start. we'll all work together. You just work together. Jasmine. Mm-hmm. We got a great team. Great yeah. team. That's right. Well, Did I mention we are called the dream team? <laughs> dream team. Yeah. Okay. All right, everyone. Well, uh, best of luck to everyone, and I'm so excited that we have this uh, small amount of money squirreled away this year to once again um, get your creative juices flowing so that we can, you know, put nurses right up there. We're doing it. We got the solutions, we're gonna address these things, and uh, we mean business.